Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Restored to Freedom School of Ministry. This is class number one, which I'm super excited about. So uh, if you can share this on your timelines, this would be great because I know that a lot of times the Holy Spirit ends up drawing in other people that desire to get set free from this stuff and to be able to learn and train them. So um, when you actually sign in, when you're actually coming on live, if you can, please tell me where you're, uh, where you're currently at. You know, you can tell me if you want just a state or a country, something like that, because that's kind of how I'm going to keep track of attendance for the class is that way I know where people are coming in from. So if you can um, write down where you are currently at, you know, physically. So if you're traveling or whatever, you're in a different city or state, then you just write that down. If you can make a comment, that would be outstanding. I can see the people popping in right now. Again, I'm a little bit early here, but that's what I want to do is give time for some people to share if you want to share it. So hello everyone that is coming in. I am excited. Holy Spirit's uh, excited. In fact, there's a I know the, uh, in the spirit realm, I can tell that the enemy is not pleased that we're doing this because we are making a huge dent in uh, those uh, for this, you know, last days that we're here on earth. And I know that this is a huge important thing for um, the body of Christ is to get purified. You know, those that are in the church, there are so many that are operating in that spirit. You know, a lot of them do it covertly a lot of them their spouses know about them but they're really good at masking it in front of the church and then they get their victims essentially to buy into that and to control them so that they don't tell anybody what they're doing behind closed doors and again there's just a lot that are in the church you know uh i would venture to say to, to some degree level wise as far as jezebel leviathan to some degree you know it's got to be over 50 percent you know to some degree behind closed doors with these, you know, marriages that are not flourishing the way they should, that are not at peace, you know, that's just, that's why we have a higher divorce rate than inside the church than we do outside the church is because there's so many that are drawn in that Jezebel spirit wants to come in and control and shut down true deliverance. And uh, it's, it, it's, it's weird because there's so many people that operate in the prophetic that it comes against that are operating in that Jezebel spirit. And then people are like, well, how can that possibly be? How can they pray in tongues? How can they prophesy? You don't have that spirit. Well, they do. They do. So anyway, when you're coming in, um, if you can please make a comment where you are currently at. I see Steph is from England and Patricia from Canada. Helmet's from the Philippines. And actually Helmet uh, translated my book, just got done finishing it in German. Um, it was like a week ago today. So it's now available on Amazon in German. It's also available in Spanish. So Restored to Freedom is one of the prerequisites. I'll put this up to the camera so you can see it. So you should have read this book. If you've not, then please get it and read it as soon as you can because it uh, does the best job of explaining. I mean, it's basically it's a manual to give to people that have that spirit to get them delivered. Um, it takes them through you know, how you get it with father wounds and uh, you can get it from a mother as well. It's got a strong controlling spirit um, but it, it really explains it well and then the Ahab book called Waking the Lion Within is another prerequisite for the course so you need to make sure you've read this if you've not already read it then please you know all these books are available on Amazon you can also get them in Kindle um, download and, uh, and then I came out with the School of Ministry training curriculum that's another thing that uh, you should have it's really kind of a guide for people that want to help other people get delivered you know, I've got it pretty simple, um, you know, the chapters. We're going to try to go through, hopefully, three chapters today. Again, we have, this is class number one. I'm going to try and keep these to an hour, so that way those people that are on the East Coast can be done by 10 p.m. Eastern. I know that we have some people that are from England that are already on here, so it's like 1 a.m., I think, their time. So kudos to uh, Steph for being here and there's uh, people and all that are from South Africa that we're planning to join. So again, when you come in, when you join, please tell me where you're from. Please make a comment. That way it will make a record of it so I know 
that you have uh, attended the class. Otherwise, it does not keep track uh, Facebook Live. So when you come on, please put on the comments, you know, where you're coming in from. So if you're from you know, College Station, Texas, you put that in. If you're from, um, you know, Houston, Texas, if you're from uh, Canada, if you're from wherever, please put that down. And uh, so it's 2 a.m. in the UK, Steph says. Really? 9 o'clock, 10, 11, 12. That's interesting. Because I thought that, I know, that, I know they go between five hours and four hours, depending on the uh, time uh, for daylight savings time. So, so again, thank you for coming in. Um, I'm going to try again, keep this to one hour. So I thank you right now. We're up to 30 people. And uh, I know that some people pop off. I'm hoping that more people will stay on the whole time, only because this is a little bit different. That I'm not doing an actual deliverance. Um, session which we were going to be doing on the last Sunday of every month. This is a training So this is basically getting to the nuts and bolts getting into the insight getting into My experiences, you know personal experiences that I've seen I've done thousands of these individual sessions for the last uh, over two years now uh, Since I started doing this like in April of 2015 um, I've been doing it full-time since uh, September of 2016 so um, So here we go, you know, I don't want to wait too long because I want to get into this. Uh, let me see what time it is. I guess it's 8.02. I'll wait. Uh, I'm, I'm local time. I'm in Houston, Texas tonight. So I'll wait another minute or so before we start because I know there's some that uh, uh, may be a little bit late. So anyway, hope everyone had a great uh, weekend. And uh, yes, you will get a certificate after completion, Tandy. So uh, this is official. And uh, I know a lot of people that... Uh, you know, there's not a lot out there. I mean, there's a lot out there if you're looking for it with Jezebel, Leviathan, and Ahab, but there's not a lot I, that I have seen where we're seeing a very high effective deliverance rate. You know, right now, I'm, I'm again, I'm estimating this based upon the experiences I've had. I've seen, I'm guessing, about 80%, maybe 85% of deliverances for people that I have worked with personally. You know, not everybody gets delivered only because it's their choice. You know, that's the challenge with Jezebel and Leviathan, Ahab. If a person wants to keep the spirit, I can't make them get rid of it no more than Jesus could do it. You know, Jesus can't override a person's free will. You know, Jesus was limited in his hometown doing these miracles, signs, and wonders because nobody believed he was Jesus. So therefore, he didn't have the opportunity to really do it. You know, and same thing with the deliverances of demons. You know, they have a right, if the person wants to keep them and operate in them, they can. And if a person wants to operate in witchcraft, they can. We don't have authority to command it off them. They have to want it to some degree. You know, I know in a lot of places, a lot of, a lot of uh, people, you don't think that they want to get delivered. You know, I know in a certain situation where a, a boy that was 18 years old that... Uh, he did not appear that he wanted to be delivered, but he did. He really did. He, he was tormented. You know, again, anyone that has Jezebel Leviathan is tormented, but it is up to them. And, and, and it comes down to they have to admit the truth that they have something that's wrong, that they want to get set freed from this. That is the challenge because there's those that are strong in that Jezebel spirit that absolutely do not want to get set free. There's nothing anybody can do about it. All we can do is make them aware. And that's what this training is about, is how do you have that conversation with maybe a total stranger? You know, I have this happen to me all the time. This happened actually just yesterday. Um, I, I had uh, my, uh, my keys were actually uh, uh, stolen, I guess, from uh, when I was in LA Fitness working out. And I uh, had a tow truck driver that was towing me to a a dealership where I was going to get my new keys and uh, had a conversation with the guy, I told him I was a Christian, told him I was down here in Houston doing ministry and had a TV show that we're starting and uh, a conversation within about, I don't know, six or seven minutes, all of a sudden, you know, he opens up, he's a Christian, he was from New Orleans, he uh, ended up moving here, he grew up in the projects, you know, was a very big overcomer, you know, in the Lord. And uh, as soon as all this started happening, within a couple of minutes, and I said, hey, have you ever heard of the spirit of Jezebel? He said, oh, yeah, I've heard of that. I go, how about Leviathan? Because most people don't even know about that. You know, I never heard of it, you know, two years ago. And probably 90% 90, 90 of Christians in church don't know anything about it. And he knew about that as well. 
Now, he didn't know the connection of the dots between the father wounds and the mother wounds and all that, but once I put together all of that, he was like, okay, I know people that have that. I know people that have that. Now, he didn't have it himself, but he knew other people that did. And so, you know, he was very grateful. I gave him the books, uh, you know, My Restored to Freedom and Waking the Lion Within, and uh, he was ready to start giving them to people to get them delivered because, you know, that's all you need. You know, this is just a, again, this course is to help give you a comfort level in doing this day to day. I don't want to make it hard for anyone. God doesn't want to make this hard, but he does want us because we have our own sphere of influences. You know, you have people that, uh, that you love. You know, you have uh, maybe uh, even ex-husbands, ex-wives that you want to get set free from this because you end up having to divorce them or they divorced you, but you don't hate them. You know, that's, that's a big thing is you have to choose to forgive. You have to recognize that these people that operate in this very evil spirits are not evil themselves per se. Yes, the spirit in them is extremely dark, extremely evil, very controlling, very lying, very manipulative, not at all fun to be married to, but understand it's the spirit. It is not necessarily who they really are. And who they could really be is very strong, powerful, and anointed. But again, the enemy comes against us that are anointed, wants to hold us back, wants to stop us from within, you know, with that spirit operating at a very high level when it's whispering to you constantly, you know, and also comes against those that are freed from the Jezebel spirit, don't have it within, but it's going to come against you from other people. So there's a couple of different ways that you can get afflicted by that spirit. You know, you can be tormented from within your thoughts constantly to another person that has it. And they're being tormented by it in their thoughts, but they're coming against you, trying to shut you down, trying to stop you. So, so it's really important to... Uh, understand you know that's the whole crux of this training this uh, school of ministry is to get you to have a comfort level i, I will on, in the fourth class that we have the classes just to let you know you know starting tonight of course and then the second class will be next sunday night october or september the 17th and then october the 1st and october the 8th so i'm planning to complete this in four sessions um i think we'll have an you know we'll be able to cover it all within the four and the goal is that you will be able to go out, you know, on the streets with your loved ones. Again, dealing with loved ones is very challenging, those that are closest to you, because you have a relationship, they're used to controlling you, they're used to dominating you, so it's really hard for them to want to listen to you. And uh, so there's other ways the Holy Spirit will be able to use you into helping them get set free. So, so basically, chapter one deals with, and we can go ahead if you, I don't know if you, don't, you don't know if you have this or not, but... You know, if you don't, this is uh, get on Amazon. I know I just came out with this, uh, what was it, Monday of last week. So I know a lot of you have not received it yet or maybe you uh, ordered it. But uh, I think it's like seven bucks or something like that on, uh, on Amazon. It's also available in Kindle, so you can download it too. But uh, again, the purpose of this is to train people on how to get others delivered from some of the strongest spirits on earth. I mean, the Lord told me that Jezebel, Leviathan are the strongest spirits afflicting people because it's so hard to catch them in what they do. I mean, they're so cunning, especially those that are an extremely strong level of that Jezebel spirit. They will operate in ways that you will not perceive it. They will act all sweet and nice, but there are little things, little crinks in the armor that uh, you can perceive. So uh, again, um, when you're coming on, uh, if you please make comments where you're coming in from. Um, I know some of you have come in a little bit later. So uh, those of you that have come on here in the last couple of minutes, please write down. That's how I'm taking attendance, is to, I'll, I'll be able to look back through and see who's actually been on here um, by you writing down where you're coming in from. So again, uh, Keith, my brother, I know Kay, uh, Janice, Lisa, Diane, Annabelle, Paul, Angela. If you can, please make a comment, write down where you're from, where you're currently dialing in from, where you're watching this from. So that's really important. So we can keep track of this so that I can uh, uh, make sure that you get the certificates at the end of the classes that we have. So uh, again, um, the biggest thing that, uh, that I have sensed, I guess, when I've done these deliverances is it's so important that the Holy Spirit directs our conversations. And it's so important that you have the ability to pray in tongues. If you don't have that, you know, ask the Lord for that, even yet tonight. 
know, I have people that have watched these Facebook Live sessions that I've done that will receive tongues like overnight. The Lord gives it to them. So if you don't have it, and, um, you know, again, the Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He's not going to force you to have it, but you will come into such a strong level of discernment and understanding, comprehension. You'll know when you're talking to someone, because it's really important when you're talking to someone that has the Jezebel spirit. Again, Jezebel, just to start things off, I guess, if you're not already aware, you should be aware of this, but Jezebel causes people to control, manipulate, lie, deceive. There's a sexual side that's selfish to it. Um, they get angry very easily trying to dominate another person. They'd ultimately want to shut down the Holy Spirit. It's a counterfeit Holy Spirit. They can, they can prophesy. They can actually be accurate on the prophecies, which is really weird and bizarre to me, but they can. Um, but they, they can also prophesy things to manipulate too. So you, you don't know which one's real or which one's not. Um, but there's always a fear. There's always an anxiety level that they have. That's how you can kind of pick up on it initially. There will not be at peace. That's one thing. It's a very big telltale sign. Um, also, if you actually look at their eyes, you're going to see that there's not much peace in the eyes. They're looking very intently at you, like, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like they can be at any point in time go off and becoming angry. And again, if you do something, you cross them, do something that they don't like, they'll be pretty strong at wanting to get their way. So there are some things, some telltale signs that you can look for. You know, in order to find that out. But uh, the biggest challenge that most people have is if they, of course, don't have the Holy Spirit, don't have the ability to pray in tongues, then that's going to uh, make it more challenging to even have a conversation with someone because you may say some things that will cause them to take an offense because Jezebel takes an offense at a drop of a hat and they will offend people all day long um, very easily. They will offend, offend, offend. They'll demand their way. So, um, so again, if you can please, those of you that are joining, can please look, write down where you're coming in from, where you're at currently, so that we know. Um, that way I've got a record of that uh, for the class. Um, all right, so, so we're kind of laying the groundwork. Leviathan spirit, you know, what is that all about? Leviathan's in Job 41. You know, that uh, is a spirit of pride. It's a water spirit. It talks about in Job 41, talks about it like a serpent, like an alligator. Um, has a long tail, it wraps around, actually wraps around the person's spine, it twists, so people normally have black back pain or neck pain. They don't get set free from that when they get prayed for in healing rooms and churches because the Spirit's there. That's, a, that's the whole thing too that I'm wanting to get through to people. When I started up my healing rooms back in October of 2015, the Holy Spirit said, let the Holy Spirit flow, get a word from the Lord. You know, I really stress that if you don't hear from the Lord that clearly. Um, again, pray, pray, and you know, pray for your tongues first of all, but then pray for a higher level of discernment. And I'm gonna, you know, impart a lot of that on people more, so that you can be able to operate in that. Because when I operate in my healing rooms, I don't want to know anything about the person to taint the word that I'm gonna get from the Lord for them. Because invariably, what happens is if a person does have a Jezebel spirit, they could act like they're the sweetest woman in the world. You would never perceive that probably, I'd say at least 70% of those that have the Jezebel spirit would have it. You would not, you know, if you're a counselor, if you're a pastor, even those that are trained, it's very hard to perceive when you're having a simply sit down conversation or a counseling session with them. They're very good at uh, twisting the truth and lying. So even myself, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't know all the time. Because, uh, you know, again, and again, there's guys that have it too. And guys are equally as good at lying and deceiving about this. So when I have a session with somebody and I sit down for the first time, and again, I'm not saying that you're all going to be like working in healing rooms. I know that. I understand that. Um, but if you do have a, a conversation that would lead to where you could get a word for someone, do it. Get a word from the Lord because I always started out my sessions in healing rooms with that because the Lord knows what the truth is. And the Lord will give me a word for them that they can handle. You know, a lot of times, like a, if a person comes in, they want prayer, they have a pain in their back or something. You know, it could be that, well, that's the Leviathan spirit. That's a lot of times it is. You know, it could be fibromyalgia, it could be cancer, whatever. So when you get a word from the Lord, it gets right to the point, but it's loving, it's gentle. You know, I, I have... <laughs> I have, and you have to be gentle with a person that has a Jezebel spirit. You can't just flat out come out and say, hey, guess what? 
guess what, uh, Jane, you got the Jezebel spirit, you know, what are they going to do? They're going to say, you know, forget you, no I don't, and then walk away, and they don't get healed. That's why you have to be so gentle. That's why sometimes it's hard for me, because I do these, I had done a lot of these individual sessions, I would do like five or six in a day, you know, doing uh, 25 to 30 in a week, and it got kind of tiring, because every single time, I would have to be so gentle, so loving, because I knew that, 90% of the people that came to me were dealing with this Jezebel and Leviathan spirits. So, um, so anyway, what you have to do is, if, if, if you can, you know, ask the Lord for a word. And then just get quiet, listen, and let the Holy Spirit speak through you. You know, it's a very gentle thing. You know, and again, that's not going to work if you're out, you know, at work, in the workplace with somebody, uh, or a family member, or on the streets. You know, I mean, it can. You can get a word for people, you know, on the streets, in the malls, and things like that. Um, you can do that. You have to be cool about it. And I want you to be weird. You know, I, I try to never be weird. Because when you're weird, you end up losing your, your client, your uh, potential person that can be healed and delivered from this stuff. You can't be weird. Don't be uh, making weird sounds. And uh, if they don't pray in tongues, don't be praying in tongues in front of them. It's going to potentially scare them away. You have to discern what they're able to receive because otherwise they're going to be gone. So, so again, you know, those spirits, uh, and then the Ahab spirit, you know, a lot of people don't talk about the Ahab that much because, oh, that's not that bad of a spirit. But they're not operating the fullness of, of, of the Lord. They're not a mighty man or woman of valor. They're operating in the Ahab spirit. The Ahab spirit causes people not to confront people that need to be confronted for what they're doing that is not right, that is sinful. You know, those that are married to the Jezebel spirits, you know, again, I had a strong Ahab. You know, I had some of the Jezebel, I had some of the Leviathan, you know, with my first wife, and I didn't know why. Well, my grandmother operated, you know, deliverance ministry, but she clearly had the Jezebel and the uh, Leviathan spirit. We didn't know it until after she passed away. So I learned a lot, because we always said, that's just the way grandma is. But when you are operating, what you're doing is you're basically hearing the enemy's voice, and that's what's causing that. You know, let's, let's be real. That's real. People hear, hear the enemy's voice. People that go to church all the time. Most people don't want to think they're hearing voices, but they are. Now, we're hearing oftentimes it's our own voice, or it could be the Holy Spirit once we get delivered from all these, these uh, spirits. And that's the whole goal. So, you know, that's, that's um, you know, again, I'll talk about this. This is in chapter one, too. Um, the Lord is purifying those that are in the church, and he knows when people are operating in it and when they're not. Here's what I've seen is uh, I basically, all I do is share the revelation, the truth with people, and then they choose to keep it or not. If they want to keep the Jezebel spirit and they have it, you know, they can, but I, I make them aware, and you should make them aware. This is a serious business thing. This is a life or death thing. You know, you can refer to them in Re Revelations chapter 2, 19 and 20, you know, goes on further than that, but it deals with one of the representations of the churches of today, the church of Thyatira. You know, God basically says that, you know, your works all are, are good and stuff, but there's something I have against you, and that is you allow and you tolerate that Jezebel spirit in the Bible. And it says you tolerate Jezebel in the church and that you allow her to teach. And so I'm going to put her on a sickbed and kill her children, which means those that she teaches. And I have seen this, where people have died after they've been told and warned that they need to get rid of the Jezebel spirit. Um, in fact, this first time I had heard about it was there was a woman from New Zealand that had told me that uh, she had it, um, or that her sister had it. Her sister had it. And so they actually confronted the sister, said, hello, you got the spirit, you need to get delivered from this. And she actually had her family members come into the room. Well, she denied that she had it. And I think she was probably like in her 50s. And she went to walk away out of the room and when she took two steps, she died instantly. So I'm not making the rules. God knows the rules. God knows if a person's gonna reject him. And, and, that, and that could be the last chance they get. You know, in and, and most of these cases, these people have done so much damage to people, hurting people, lying about people, you know, those that are in the church just whisper and whisper and control, manipulate, and it's a nasty, evil, bad spirit. And so God gives them a chance to repent. And if he doesn't, then he can put them on a sick bed and he can kill them. Um, and th this just happened recently, like, um, I think it was like probably in July or August um, of 2017 this year. And 
there was a woman from Ohio that was married to a pastor, and the woman had the Jezebel spirit. The pastor confronted her in front of some family members and maybe some people at church, and she denied that she had it. She actually left the church, and within 30 days she died of hemorrhaging from the mouth, and uh, she was 32 years of age. So when people hear these stories, and God wanted me to share these for a reason, is it serious business. This is life and death. We cannot, we can lie to other people, you know. Obviously we can't really lie to our spouse, but you know, we're being mean to our spouses. We're being mean to our children, those that have the Jezebel Leviathan spirits. And it's up to us once we get set free to help them see the truth. And, uh, and then it's up to them to choose, you know, it's, they have a free will, but to choose the freedom that they could have by getting delivered from the spirits and getting healed from things, oftentimes physically, of course, they have problems, but they have to want it. They can't just be half-heartedly, you know, reading these prayers and then they end up not getting set free. So, so anyway, again, those that are uh, that are coming in, if you can please um, make a comment as to where you're coming in from. So where you're at right now, you know, give me a city, give me a state, give me a country because that's how I'm keeping track of your attendance. If you've not done that, then I will not know, and then you will not get credit with the attending of this. And you, uh, you know, if you want to get the certificate at the end of the classes, which we're going to be concluding October the 8th, then you need to make sure that uh, that's how I keep track, basically. So, so please write down, you know, your, uh, where you're coming in from, where you're at currently, you know, city, state, whatever. All right, so, um, so that's essentially taking us through chapter one. Um, chapter two, how does Jezebel Leviathan afflict people? You know, again, you know, the, this should be basic for most people, but I wanna make sure that we cover this because it is so important to understand because if you don't know how it afflicts them, then you're not gonna know what the red flags, what the telltale signs are that uh, people that have that, so. So here is what I always, you know, look for. You know, of course, when I'm having a conversation with somebody, you know, on the streets or at church or whatever, you know, it's very easy you know, to ask some couple questions. One of them is, well, what was your relationship like with your father? You know, when you grew up, you know, if it wasn't good, then, uh, and it could be the same thing for the, for the mother. You know, you need to make sure you cover both bases there. Um, because if you ask them flat out, you know, hey, are you a controlling person? You know, what are they going to say? They're going to say, no, I'm not a controlling person. I'm a loving person. Why would they say that? So, so essentially the, the true b behaviors of the person that has it is they are going to be controlling. You know, they are going to be controlling. They are going to be manipulative. Now, you may not see that. You may not perceive that because, again, if you're going to church with them and you just simply talk to them, they could be a sweet, nice person. You'll never know that. You know, you wouldn't know that. Now, you may ask their husband. You may ask their wife. And you may can see it on their actual faces that they are like looking pretty drained, you know. And, and I know, with, you know, in, in fact, myself personally, I felt like my spouse was such a liar, you know, because and, and a uh, hypocrite because, you know, we'd go to church and she'd act all sweet and nice. And people are like, oh, you're so godly of a woman and your husband's so lucky to be married. And I'm like thinking the whole time, my gosh, if they knew the truth, you know, this is such ridiculousness that uh, the person is completely not that way, you know, around me. And uh, I know a lot of you that are actually joining this, you know, have been married to spouses that are like that. And uh, you just feel like, you know, you want to put up a, a sign saying they're a liar, you know, they're a liar, they're not telling the truth. So, so essentially the behaviors are, and again, oftentimes only the people that are married to them or in relationship with them would know this. And again, you, you could have a boss that has Jezebel Leviathan. I mean, there's again, there, they're a person, and people have Jezebel Leviathan spirits, and they will be in the workforce, and they will be married to people. So, and they'll be in the church, and so it's very, very important to perceive that. Um, the biggest thing that will be underlying it is fear and anxiety. They will not be a calm person, and they will oftentimes overcompensate, and they will act overconfident, like they're in control of everything. You know, and if they're not in control of everything, they'll get anxious. They'll get, you know, anxiety. They'll be in fear. You know, it's really hard if you're in obviously marriage to somebody to not pick up on that. You'll know it because they're very anxiety ridden. Um, so it's really hard though to perceive. You know, if you're not married to them, if you uh, aren't around them a whole lot, 24 hours a day, um, 
but you know the, the symptoms are of course they're controlling they're manipulative they're lying deceitful there's a sexual side that is selfish perverse they'll do things that are not healthy you know sexually oftentimes they, they can be into pornography uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they have the Jezebel spirit people that have the Ahab spirit oftentimes are afflicted with pornography um, and the reason why is because they're married to people that are Jezebels that are controlling them not giving them sex so therefore they end up desiring that it was a physical thing that God put in them and so they end up turning to pornography and they don't want to do that I mean hopefully people and if they have a true Holy Spirit inside them they won't want to do that they'll feel really guilty and ashamed of doing that you know behind closed doors and privacy now those that have no conscience that are say oh everybody does this no big deal then they're probably not a Christian so so anyway um, so those are some of the traits and again understanding how a person gets that spirit is so critical for you and when you're doing your training um, uh, learning this when you're actually doing doing the actual ministry of getting people delivered because you have to understand that they're not really per se a bad person the spirit is evil and wicked in every way absolutely but if you can understand and see from God's perspective how these people became that way you know God doesn't create any of us to become Jezebel Leviathan Ahab spirited people he creates us to be perfect in every way and that's what his design is and so unfortunately though when we grow up in a family where we don't have the love the unconditional love of the father or the mother that this enemy will start whispering to us when we're growing up and that is the real big key is to recognize that people are hearing voices they're thinking it's their own voice but it's not it's the enemies and so when you understand that to that level and that degree then you can obviously give them more grace you could say okay this person is not a bad person the spirit is very evil and wicked you know that they have and it's driving them it's causing them to hear this thought that's tormenting them it's truly torment is what it is these voices are pretty darn strong especially if you have a strong Jezebel spirit I've had a lot of people that have come out of being Jezebeled you know and being freed that have told me that the enemy told them a lot of bad things about their spouse you know I had one woman that said that uh, her husband was like watch you know watching a TV show it was a Christian show or reading the Bible and and the enemy told her, look at him, he's not doing anything. He's just sitting there like a bump in a log. He's wasting time. He should be out there like, you know, doing yard work and stuff. So she started up a strife with him, started in on him verbally. You know, and it wasn't until she got delivered that she was like, you know what? I was ruining my relationship with my husband. It was my fault, not his. And the same thing, I had another woman that talked about her children that uh, said that her children were just awful to deal with. And she thought it was all them. But it wasn't. She had the Jezebel Leviathan spirit, and it wasn't until she got delivered. And it wasn't until the second time that she went through our deliverance sessions and prayers before she truly got delivered. And that's a big thing that's important to understand is the first time people go through these deliverance prayers, they may not understand it in their spirit yet. They may just be saying it because, okay, it's supposed to be good for me, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. And then they don't get delivered. You know, so I try to make sure that you guys are aware of that, that it may take a second time, it may take a third time, it may take them couple of weeks or a couple of months before the Holy Spirit gently confirms to them hello how could you not be affected because of what you went through with your mother and or your father and then when you start truly saying you know what that's tr that's, that's right you know my gosh I do operate in this I didn't want to think I did you know my gosh but I want to be honest you know and that's how it has to be you have to be honest you have to look in the mirror at yourself and saying man what is real you know, I'm tired of this. I'm being tormented. You know, I'm not at peace. You know, I've got sicknesses. I got my back pain, neck pain, and I'm exhausted. And I want to get rid of this. I want to mean it this time when I read these prayers. And again, the prayers are nothing magic. You know, there's tons of people have different ways of getting delivered from this stuff. You know, but it's a guide. It's a guideline. You know, again, I've got the prayers that are in the booklet here, as well as in Restore Your Freedom and Waking the Lion Within. So it gives you a guideline that you can give to a person, you know, that they can read it for themselves. You know, I've had some people that it makes me even cry because, you know, you can see them life changing. You know, when I when I you know start hearing people read the prayers and I know that they mean it with their heart, you can tell. You know, sometimes they're crying, sometimes they're tearing up. You know, because they know they're like, my gosh, this explains everything. You're right. You're the first person. I've heard that so many times. You're the first person that's told me this. You know, I've gone through countless counseling sessions with pastors. I've done sozo sessions. I've done uh, 
counseling with psychologists, not one person told me that this is what I was dealing with. And it explained it all. So once they came to that uh, decision, it was just like so touching. I mean, I, I cried so many times when people would go through these, you know, thousands of times saying, my gosh, this is what it's truly about, getting people set free. You know, they have to also choose to forgive the people that hurt them. Because if we don't forgive them, then how can the Father forgive us? So those are the two components you really need to have to get a person delivered, is they have to be repentant, you know, to, to admit what they've done. Say, yep, absolutely, I've done this, I'm so sorry, it's true, I've done really bad things. And then choose to forgive, and that's part of the prayers that I have. You know, and again, I've, I've gotten it shortened down when I do my worldwide deliverance sessions, or if I'm working with a person, it's just like leading a person to Christ. You don't have to have them read the entire, you know, you know, whatever confessional on, on getting, you know, asking Jesus into their hearts. You know, they can just say, hey, Jesus, come live with me in my heart. In Jesus' name, that's what I want to serve. You can make it very basic. It's the condition of the heart. You know, it's the intent of the heart that makes all the difference in the world. So... Um, let me see. But yeah, it's really important uh, with chapter 2 to, to describe to the people about their thoughts. Because when, and I've actually put some things in here that are really helpful. Because when you grew up, say, with a, a father that wounded you, you know, what, does, what do they hear? You know, oftentimes they hear, your father does not love you. That's what they hear from the enemy. You cannot trust your father or mother to protect you. You know, and 90% and, and of the time, yeah, it's right. You know, the enemy's right, but he is bringing it in to them to get them to buy into it. And then he's going to have a 10% of that's a lie to try to counter what the truth truly is. You know, some of it is you were never wanted. It would have been better if you were never born. I mean, these are horrible things the enemy says to them. You know, you cannot trust anyone. You need to control everyone because they do not have your best interests at heart and do not love you. And in, in many cases, again, the children are growing up. You know, they're, you know, they're, they start getting essentially hurt when they're young. And as they get older and older and older, then they start having their heart just get hurt so badly, you know, and they want so desperately to be loved from their father and to be cherished from their father. You know, in my case, I know I love my daughter so much, love my sons so much. It was harder with my son, well, with my oldest son because he was afflicted by an enemy spirit. So he was not the way he really was. And it wasn't until later when I prayed for him, he got set free from that. He became who he really was after 10 years of going through hell, torment, you know, with our whole family. Um, but it was so important, you know, and I just, I did, I loved my children. Um, and I really, really loved it. It's such an important thing, you know, especially for, I know, a little girl to have a father relationship that the father shows them the love, you know, unconditional. I, I, I can't, I can't understand how not to love my children. You know, I wasn't, when I brought up, was brought up, I didn't have a horrible father, horrible mother. You know, I knew they loved me. You know, they both prayed in tongues. They were Christians. Now they weren't, you know, my dad wasn't strong as what he needed to be in the spirit realm. So that's why I became an Ahab. But uh, um, anyway, um, it's important, so important to, uh, to start talking to people when you're actually going to be doing a, you know, a session with them. Ask them about their thoughts. You know, what kind of thoughts do you hear? You know, are they peaceful thoughts? You know, and then explain to them. That, yeah, our thoughts come from three different places. From ourselves, from the enemy, or from the Lord or the Holy Spirit. And more often than not, they're coming in from the enemy. They're not coming in from the Lord. You know, that taints them. I know a lot of people, again, that have the Jezebel Leviathan spirits, they're hearing from the enemy a lot. You know, and until they get delivered from that, I mean, and when they do get delivered from that, all of a sudden it's like that voice gets way quiet now. And now they can deal with the enemy kind of whispering to them. It's interesting because, um, you know, I used to get hit by the enemy like everybody else did. But now anymore, it's like almost impossible uh, for the enemy to do that. Like uh, when I ended up having my keys missing, you know, I could have let the enemy start giving me these thoughts. I didn't get one thought. I didn't get any fear at all. You know, I, I checked to see if my car was stolen because they could have. Because I was in the back part of, uh, actually I was in the back part of LA Fitness walking around. I put my keys in my shirt and uh, it was a hot day um, yesterday. But I was walking around there and so I, it wasn't out of my view for very long because I went around the side of the building and I saw a couple cars came through, including a cop. Uh, but when I ended up learning that my keys were gone and I went to see you know, if my car was still in the front, I saw that it was there and it was fine. 
You know, I didn't hear of the enemy. The enemy could have easily said, oh, you're going to lose your car, or you're not going to be able to do this, 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 and this. Well, I shut it down immediately. I would not let myself get a thought. But those that aren't to that level yet are going to get hit by the enemy, especially if they have Jezebel, Leviathan spirits, and even the Ahab spirits. They're going to get hit by the enemy strong until they get delivered from them. So you need, you need to make, that, uh, make them aware of that, that their thoughts are not their own. For the, for the majority of the time, you know, when they're operating at a strong level. Because the enemy's going to whisper lies to them, you know, and they're going to cause them to cause strife and, you know, put distance between them and family members. They'll, they'll speak lies. In fact, um, I see this in a lot of cases where you have a mother that has the Jezebel spirit is oftentimes she will try to put distance between her children. She will try to lie and say that one son said this about them and cause them to hate each other. That's what Jezebel will do. It's very wicked, very evil. And so you have these family members that don't talk to each other for years. It's very sad. You know, I didn't grow up like that, but I know of families that have had that. Um, one of my best friends, um, his uh, mother um, lived actually in Florida, and she did that. He goes, what mother does that, Nelson? And I'm like, well, a mother that's controlled by the Jezebel spirit will do that. He's like, I don't understand that. You know, he didn't understand it until actually I started coming into this revelation. And then all of a sudden he's like, my gosh, this makes all the sense in the world. This is exactly what is going on. So, and again, anyone that's uh, coming in here late, if you can just write down where um, you are at right now, like what city, what state, and uh, so that way I can keep track of the attendance. That would be great and helpful. So yeah, so it's important to understand that. And then again, you know, Leviathan spirit the symptoms of that is people are going to have back pain, neck pain, they could have scoliosis, even fibromyalgia, cancer, lupus, other diseases. Usually, usually they'll have insomnia, so when they try to sleep at night they will wake up because it tries to steal their dreams. And um, essentially, um, if they try to read the word, they try to even like read my books and stuff, they'll fall asleep because that's, that uh, spirit of Leviathan wants to control them and stop them from being set free because it knows that if it reads like the Bible, if it reads, you know, one of these books that are, you know, any book that's a spiritual book, it wants them to, to not read it because otherwise they could get set free from it because that's that spirit inside wants to operate covertly. It wants to commingle their thoughts that they say to you with your own thoughts. So it's a very, very challenging, especially the Leviathan because it will actually twist the truth in their mind. So you could have a conversation with somebody that has Leviathan and they will just twist and twist and twist even what you're talking about and put it back on you and make you sound like you're crazy. And it's like, uh, wait a minute, what do I have to do? Do I have to record a conversation? Because what you just said, I don't think makes sense. And they'll make you question yourself. You'll think that you're going crazy, which is not good, obviously, at all. You know, and, uh, and again, this uh, we're talking about people that are like pastors' wives, even pastors, pastors' mothers, um, husbands, you know, um, worship leaders, all kinds of people in the church are operating in this. Not saying that everybody is, but there's, I don't know, there's at least 50%, probably more, that are operating in that to some degree. You know, there's some that are stronger than others, of course, and it's a matter of letting them know that, hey, we need to get you set free from this if you have any of this whatsoever. You know, again, look at the signs, you know. Um, the psychological community would call those that are strongly affected by Jezebel a narcissist, uh, narcissistic behavior. Um, they, they're, they're persistently, like, grandiose. They make up all kinds of things. Like, they'll say that, you know, hey, you know, I'm working on this big deal or I'm going to have this contract and blah, 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 blah. And it's just a bunch of lies. Um, they want to be admired. They think that they're beautiful or very handsome all the time. And, you know, I'm God's gift to uh, uh, the women and the men. And uh, everybody wants me and blah, blah, blah. They have a disdain and lack of empathy for others. They're very arrogant. They are acting very superior, like they think they know everything. Um, they want to have power. You know, oftentimes they may want to control, like, the finances in the relationship. Um, because if they can control that, then they control a lot, you know. Um, so anyway, um, oftentimes they may even open up like a private bank account. Um, they're very disregarding the feelings of others, expect to be treated as superior, regardless of their actual status or achievements, have fragile egos. Yeah, they're very um, insecure, you know, those that are like, would be considered the narcissistic uh, Jezebels out there. 
They act like they're very confident and cocky and stuff, but they're not. Inside, they're very insecure, and they want to uh, act like they're all that, and they're not. Um, they can't stand to be criticized, even constructively. You know, again, nobody likes to be criticized, but uh, even a, even constructive, you know, coaching, I guess I will call it, you can do it in a loving way. You know, I, I can be told that, hey, Nelson, you know, if you do it this way, it might be a little bit better. I'm like, oh, great. You know, I want to do that because I want to be the best that I can. But a person that has the Jezebel spirit of strong level, if you try to, you know, give them a coaching tip, they will take it personal and they will get mad at you and they won't receive it. So um, they're very good at belittling others, you know, they'll belittle you, they may question you, they may say, hey, you're a very insecure person. You know, oftentimes they will put on you what's on them, and they'll say that you're not very confident and uh, whatever, so, but they are definitely not uh, good people to be around, it's very hard. Um, I think I would estimate around 15% of those that are Jezebels or narcissistic behaviors, while 85% are affected to a lesser degree. And uh, again, the Lord has showed me and I've seen this validated with the people that I've dealt with, is, is to some degree, some level of degree, that women are affected about 60% of the time with Jezebel, and men about 30% of the time. Um, and the reason why the Lord told me there's more women than men is because the women's hearts are meant to be loved and cherished by their fathers, that they can have, handle the harshness um, of words and rejection and stuff, as well as a man, because a man was meant to be like going to war and fighting and protecting you know, so they can take a little more roughness and, and a little more rejection. But, uh, obviously, guys that have it and women that are drawn to them, married to them, uh, my heart goes out to the women because they are very, very mean. And, uh, again, anyone that's got Jezebel is going to be mean and controlling. It's not fun, obviously, to deal with that. So, so anyway, um, let me check the time. It's 8.42. Um, what, what would that be? Central time? Yes, 8.42 Central Time. So we've got about another 18 minutes here. Uh, so let me see if I'm, in th I'm almost through with Chapter 2. Um, chapter 3. So we've got about 18 minutes left. Um, nom, 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 nom. Yes, I'm going to go there. Holy Spirit said yes. So this is Chapter 3 talks about engaging people with the Jezebel Leviathan spirit. You know, engaging a person that has that. How do you do it? What's the best way of doing it? You know, obviously you need to do it with love, tenderness, and compassion. You need to see them as Christ sees them. And whenever I do my sessions with people, you know, it, and oftentimes I can pick up on it if they try to kiss up to me, you know, and uh, th they're operating in the spirit, you know, right then and there. They try to, uh, try to brown nose, is how we used to call it when I was in high school. But uh, <laughs> that's what they try and do. They try to, like, kiss up to you and... Oh, you're so uh, whatever, you know, to, to get you on their side. And uh, it's important to see through that. It's important to uh, not believe everything that they're saying because, again, they're trying to manipulate. That spirit's so good at seducing people. I'm not saying sexually. It can, and it does do that as well. Um, absolutely. I mean, it, it does have a sexual side that's not good, you know, but uh, I'm saying it tries to pull you in. And you have to look at them with the love and compassion of the Lord and not look at them as an evil, horrible person. Um, the spirit is. You always have to separate the spirit from the person. That that spirit is obviously very evil, very wicked. But again, they were hurt deeply as a child when they grew up. And if you can recognize and see that, then you can see them more as Christ sees them. That God didn't create them that way. God created them to be loving in general, but they were hurt by rejection from a father, they were hurt from control from the father, harsh words, all the way to the abuse, you know, standards, as well as the mother that could be really strong and controlling. So that is not good, not good at all. So, um, so anyway, um, once you understand and recognize that, then what I always do is get a word from the Lord. You know, I start off the sessions with a word from the Lord and, uh, Again, that's, that's when I'm doing actual sessions with somebody. If you are just out, you know, about in the, you know, in your church, in the marketplace, at work or at school, then you're not going to normally get a word from the Lord. But you do want to at least, uh, if you can, pray in tongues before you start. That would be a good thing. But try to lay the groundwork. You know, I try to, when I pray for you know, a person for the first time, I try and shut down all voices from the enemy before I pray for them and get a word as well as charging the angels over me to come into position and over them 
and then allow the Holy Spirit to flow and then let the Holy Spirit direct that session. So, uh, but again, here's the questions that I would ask and I list them out here because they're all pretty much standard now. You know, I ask them, well, what was your relationship like with your father growing up? You know, if they said they never really knew their father, it wasn't very good, you know, or it was really bad, and that's the first red flag. That would be an indicator that they could possibly be affected by that Jezebel spirit or, and or Leviathan. You know, if they said it was good, you know, maybe the father was an Ahab. And oftentimes that's the case. My father wasn't bad, you know, he was, he was good. He wasn't a strong spiritual leader, but he wasn't mean to me or anything. So then it's like, okay, well, then maybe, um, how is your mom's relationship with you? And if that was not good, if they were really controlling and manipulative and verbally stuff, then they could pick up the Jezebel spirit from that. So you need to probe you know, some questions there. Um, and I'll say this too. Um, there's one session that I did with a woman and she said that her father loved her. You know, that, and my question to her was, what was it like when you grew up you know, with your father? She said, and she just said, well, you know, in current tense, my father loves me. I was like, okay, well that's good. I'm like, that's good, but that's not what I asked you. What was your relationship like with your father when you grew up? And then she said, well, um, well, he was hurt really badly by his father. I'm like, oh, okay. So I said, you know, a third time, so what was your relationship like with your father when you grew up? She's like, well, it wasn't good. I'm like, okay, so now we're getting to the truth of the matter. Because so many people want to kind of protect their fathers and mothers. They want to act like they were good when they really weren't. I mean, nobody wants to really say, yep, they were really bad mom and dad. You know, my dad was awful to me. Because you know, then you feel like you're kind of ratting on him. You know, and, but it's true. You've got to be true. You've got to be honest. You know, the other thing I want to talk about is Freemasons and Shriners because Leviathan curse can come down the bloodline if you had a father, grandfather, great grandfather that was ever involved in Freemasons. So that's important because, again, what they're saying is they're, they're praying basically, it's, they're worshiping the great architect of the universe, which is not God, it's Satan. When they get to a 32nd degree level of a Freemason, they have to make a vow that they're going to serve Satan with their life and that they would be poking a knife into their eye if they ever disclose what goes on behind closed doors in secrecy. And then they can graduate from a Freemason into a Shriner from that. So it's just totally demonic and it's unfortunate. But I've had a number of people that will get the Leviathan spirit down the bloodline because of that. They'll have back pain, neck pain, scoliosis. They'll have uh, you know insomnia. They get fibromyalgia, they get cancer, so it's really important to get delivered from that. Um, in fact, one woman I'll share, she had a Leviathan spirit, and uh, she was watching on Facebook Live, and uh, she uh, had lupus, she had fibromyalgia, her stomach was bloated, looked seven months pregnant, and after she went through the prayers, within 20 minutes her stomach went back to normal. You know, how crazy is that? You know, she could actually feel Leviathan unwrap from her spine, so it's pretty darn cool. You know, I love stuff like this, you know, because this is like real. This is truth. You know, you don't hear this oftentimes in churches. And I'm like, man, if I was a pastor, I would be talking about this because I want people truly to be set free. You know, because uh, otherwise they're going to be tormented and they're going to be miserable. They're not going to be free whatsoever. So they're not going to be able to come into who they truly are. So, all right, let me see time check wise. We have about 10 minutes left. Oh, this is going too fast. Um, so again, um, on page 14 of the School of Ministry training, um, C, it talks about ask probing questions. You know, do you have anxiety? Do you desire to get what you want most of the time? And if you don't get what you want, do you get angry? Again, they have to be honest, you know. Oftentimes, they're not going to be honest if they have a strong Jezebel spirit. You know, again, oftentimes I've seen people that have a strongest Jezebel spirit will flat out deny, oh, there's no way that I have the Jezebel spirit. Whereas people that have it to some degree said, huh, yeah, maybe I think I might have that. Well, if I have anything like that, I don't want it. And then they can get delivered pretty easily, but otherwise um, they'll try to hide it. Um, number two, explain to the person how experience has shown that those who have been hurt by the father or, or strong mother wounds oftentimes get attacked by an enemy spirit that comes against those anointed. So that's important to understand. When they understand that those that are the anointed, those like Elijah, Elijah was attacked by Jezebel herself. You know, he did not have Jezebel within himself. But those that are anointed oftentimes have Jezebel within themselves. 
And so when you can explain to them that, hey, you are so anointed, which is true, they are, but they have to get set free from that spirit. You know, when they get set free from that, they'll be off the charts, and people are. I have so many people that tell me afterwards they feel so much peace, their whole countenance has changed. When they walk into a room now, people feel the peace. They're like, what happened to you? You're radiating. You look so great. And then they can hear the Lord's voice more clearly than ever. A lot of them come into prophetic um, anointings that are extremely strong. So that is the whole goal, um, getting them set free. And they are anointed. So the uh, enemy wants to come against those that are anointed. Um, uh, and then when a child grows up not feeling loved, you know, being rejected, criticized, or hurt more strongly, then the enemy starts whispering to them. So again, I list out here some of those voices that they hear. You know, you cannot trust your father or mother. You are not loved. You're never wanted. Um, you must control your circumstances because no one else will watch out for you. Now, that's where it really starts to kick in. When they don't trust anybody, they're in fear, they start to control. They got to do their, their, their selves their own way. They have to do everything that they want. So if you're married to them, of course, you're in misery. You never have peace, obviously. So when you can explain this and they can buy in and start shaking their heads like, yeah, I think, uh, hmm, and you have to do it in love. You can't be like having an attitude of arrogance and pride and saying, oh man, you're so bad. I can't believe you did this. You're such a liar. No, that's not the way that I'm seeing my deliverances work. They're all in love. That's how they need to be. So, so anyway, I want, I want to conclude this with like five minutes left so people can, or maybe even more than that. So I think I'm going to stop. Let me see. I'll go, I'll, go, I'll go one more minute here. Then you should also explain, you know, how the enemy commingles his whispers with their thoughts. So that's really important. When they can start to really say, you know what, I was having those thoughts. You know, I've had I know one woman that said, you know what, I did hear those whispers. I did. I, I, I admit it. I heard those whispers and they were saying things, you know, you cannot trust your mom. You know, you, your dad never wanted you because otherwise he would have been in your life. You know, all these things that are nasty lies from the enemy, you know. And uh, little girls shouldn't be hearing those voices, you know, but they do. They do. We need to be real with people. You know, we, we all hear voices, you know, sometimes they're our own thoughts, sometimes they're the Lord, sometimes they're the enemy. So it's really important. And then explain about, yeah, how the spirit of Leviathan always joins up with Jezebel. Again, I've seen everybody that has Jezebel has Leviathan. Not everybody that has Leviathan will have Jezebel, though, because sometimes they may have a grandfather that was involved in Freemasons, and then they end up picking up Leviathan from them, but they had a otherwise decent father and mother that they didn't pick up Jezebel from. So, but talk about you know how you're going to fall asleep when trying to read the word, listen to the word. You have insomnia. They can't fall asleep at night. They have back pain, neck pain. And then when you describe these symptoms for people, and they start shaking their heads like, oh my gosh, light bulbs go off. Oh my gosh, you're talking about me. You're talking about me. Then you know it's going to be a slam dunk with the deliverance for the most part because when they start buying into that, saying my gosh. That's me. In fact, I remember I had one woman that was in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. I'll never forget this. It was on a Wednesday night. And I don't know, there's probably like 60 people, 70 people in the church. And uh, I was speaking, and uh, as I'm describing all this behavior and stuff, she's putting her hand up in the background like, Ah, oh, you're talking about me. You're talking about me. That's me. That's me. And I was thinking, are you kidding me? I didn't think I'd ever see the day where somebody would do that. Praise God. You know, she got delivered easily, so... All right, we're going to end right there for tonight's session. If there's anyone that has any questions, let me know. Now, Amy, I know you said this went too fast. Um, you can rewatch this. You know, anything that we just did on here, you can rewatch it because, of course, it's being recorded. So, uh, and again, I know some people don't um, pick it up the first time. You can watch it, and then you can always pause it. So that's what's uh, beautiful about this is this is like a training video that uh, you would have to order and stuff. So um, did I mention the manual? Yes, Debbie, um, it is on Amazon. So it is called the School of Ministry Training Curriculum. You can get this on uh, Amazon. So definitely you can pick that up paperback or on uh, um, Kindle. So. Uh, and you can rewatch this within minutes after I post it, Debbie. So, so yes. Also, please, um, again, I've never asked for money, but the Lord told me to because I'm trying to grow the ministry. And, of course, it does take money. I don't 
Only, only time I ever uh, receive money is uh, when people, of course, buy the books, but when I'm also speaking in churches. But the Lord wants me to do more training and equipping. And of course, this is a school, and you will receive, you know, a certificate, kind of a stamp of approval from Restored to Freedom, being trained in getting people delivered from Jezebel, Leviathan, and Ahab. So, um, I am asking if you would please make a donation on RestoredToFreedom.com when we're done. Um, I mean, and, and I'm just doing it at the end of each class. I'm not making you pay up front. So, um, hopefully, you saw some value in tonight in learning. Um, my suggestion is 15 to 20 dollars. Uh, would be great because again I'm trying to do more things you know get more of this word out there to do more traveling and things like that and of course that does um, cost but um, think of it as sowing into the ministry as well you know if you truly believe in me as a person you believe in what we're seeing results wise you know I'm seeing again such a high level of people getting delivered changing lives saving marriages you know that's the whole goal behind this this is an end time ministry that is truly carrying out Revelations chapter 2, trying to purify people from the Jezebel spirit. And uh, that's my heart. And that's what I want you guys to do as too, is to train you. So um, if you would, please, um, all you have to do is go out to RestoredToFreedom.com and you can do it through PayPal or Visa or MasterCard or American Express. And uh, again, that really helps, helps me out. Um, to, uh, and again, most of the money that I get goes back into the ministry. You know, I... I I end up coming out with new books. I end up buying new books. You know, and a lot of the books I end up giving away. Um, you know, I'd probably say even a fourth of the books um, because that's my heart. People can't afford it, and so I want to help get people delivered. So I end up sewing them into other people's lives. But if you would um, really appreciate that, um, just at the end of the class, um, you can go out there. Again, I, I hate asking for money because I never do that. But the Lord said in this case, it is a school of ministry. It is a training ground so people can sew into it so um, that's my that's my effort there so I thank you so much for anyone and everyone so and I love you guys you know what I mean this is really a dream you know to do this because you know I never would have ever thought that I would be doing this you know back in 2008 you know I mean this is crazy crazy you know stuff the Lord had me go through and and I never thought I could ever do this full time. You know, I never had a desire to do full time ministry, but um, I used to sell software to banks, and uh, this is so much more rewarding. We're literally seeing lives change. We're literally seeing marriages saved. You know, not, again, not every marriage is being saved you know, because Jezebel has a free will, but that is my goal. That is my heart's desire. You know, and, and, and people are seeing dramatic changes. In fact, um, um, there's a woman that. Uh, is a part of a pretty big ministry and she said Nelson this is world changing what you're doing she goes you know there's, there's people that are out there they're doing great stuff obviously prophetic words and healings and uh, deliverances but she said the way that the Lord has finally revealed this you know to you and through you to other people um, and you're seeing changes a lot of times instant changes you know sometimes it's progressive but uh, Ultimately, when a person has Jezebel and they no longer have it, they're a completely different person. You know, they're humble, they're loving, they're kind, and they're sweet. So, so anyway, um, I don't want to cry. So, <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. You know, it's becoming like a family. I mean, I love the support group that we have. Started the Jezebel Ahab Leviathan support group. That's a blessing to have that. Um, I know a lot of people that have had the Ahab spirit. You know, they're just feeling like they're dying out there, you know, because... They've never, they've been on an island their whole lives, you know, being married to one person or maybe a second or a third person and they don't know what they're dealing with. They're like, why do I keep drawing these people in? You know, I mean, the Lord had me write this book that just came out, um, Choosing a Godly Mate. And that's what I want to do is to help people before they get married to get set free, you know, like from an Ahab spirit so that they don't have to go through Jezebel experience again, you know. And, and the Lord's had me go into a college, you know, and I'm going to actually be meeting here in Houston with a person that works with people that uh, deals with college kids. And Lord's like, if you can get to them before they get married, then we can stop another generation of developing Jezebels, you know, and, and Leviathan and Ahabs and, and uh, have healthy children. You know, that's the goal is to start, you know, doing it when they're college age because they've already come out of the home now, you know, and so the, 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 the herd of the enemy has already been taken place as they've grown up, but now they're out. You know, once they get out of the home, 
then if we can get to them right away before they get married, then we can save a lot. So, so yeah, life altering is what I want this to be. So, well, uh, what time is it? It is now nine o'clock central. So, I um, try to think if there's anything else that I need to cover. Um, 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 um. I know I mean, we may need to, and I don't want to do this for more than an hour. Maybe I need to, but. Uh, um, and I can always modify this so you guys can let me know. You can give me feedback. But again, I, uh, if, you've, if you've not made a comment on this, please make a comment because that's how I keep track of the attendance. Um, and you can message me, you know, after class. You can send me a Facebook message. So, and you can share this, of course. You know, again, the Lord wants more people to get delivered, and uh, but they want He wants people to know specifically how to deliver Jezebel the Vipha. Hey, how there's so many. I know that are in healing rooms that don't address this. They're missing the boat. You know, if, if it's true and what I've seen in my own healing rooms, I, I pretty much take through everybody through these. You know, unless they had a great relationship with their father and mother. You know, because it, it also deals with, Jeze uh, with gener generational curses too. So we need to get rid of the generational stuff. And Jezebel, and Leviathan, and Ahab. So, um, so anyway, um, I think that's it. So again, it's restoredtofreedom.com. Um, you can find that, um, I know, on the invite, the uh, uh, event invite, but RestoredToFreedom.com is where my website's at. So I love you guys. I'm so glad that God is doing this, and uh, hopefully we can do more and more of this. You know, and, and all, we had, I don't know how many we're going to have total. I know we saw something like 50 or 55 people that were on it at once, but uh, typically some people pop on, pop off, so it may be that we've had... You know, I don't know, a couple hundred people that are on here. Um, but again, the next session that we're going to do, it's going to be a week from today, Sunday night. Um, and uh, that'll be same time, 9 o'clock Eastern. And then uh, the week after that, we're taking it off because I'm doing a worldwide deliverance session. So hopefully we'll get thousands of people on there. And then the next week, October 1st, October 8th, are the last two sessions. Again, I'm hoping I can do this in just four and I'd like to open up to have more questions too. You know, I want this to be a, a class type situation. So, so anyway, um, all right. Well, so again, I'm glad that you guys can rewatch this if you need to. Um, hopefully I didn't go too fast. You know, I know that uh, I got a lot of stuff that I wanna cover and uh, I know a lot of you that have followed me for a long time have picked this up. Again, I'm learning myself. You know, I'm not an expert at anything. I don't want to call myself that. I just have a lot of experience. I think it is crazy that I think about this. I'm like, my gosh, I remember sleeping in bed the other night thinking, my gosh, who am I? You know, who am I? I used to sell software. I used to work on a farm, grew up on a farm, you know, in Columbia City, Indiana, west of Fort Wayne. And uh, what, what, are, what are you doing, God? You know, it, it's, it's a blessing. So anyway, all right. I love you guys. So... Yes, and I'll be in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, September the 22nd through the 26th. Praise God. So, all right, we'll, we'll let you guys go and have a great rest of your evening. Again, if you can make donations, I would really appreciate that. Suggested $15, $20, and that's out on RestoredToFreedom.com. And uh, I just pray right now over everyone right now in Jesus' name that you will bless them, Lord, that you will protect them in the name of Jesus. I just mind rebuke the enemy, all enemy interference on their lives, on their finances, God. I just pray blessings over them, that you will bless them, Lord God, as they sow into this ministry that is going to be life-changing for millions around the world, Lord, as you're growing this. This is just the first step of class number one, Lord, and I thank you, Father God, what you're doing, Lord. Just continue to bless them, protect them, protect their families, Lord. Allow them to walk in the fullness of who they're called to be. To speak divine health over them, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, love you guys. See ya. Bye.